In this house, as we worship you, Lord, we move right into the faith of your word as we speak it today. God, the most important things in this house, Lord, the lifting up of your name and then the declaring of your word, all of the things follow, God. And we just ask you today that your anointing be strong in this moment, that you would open up our spiritual ears to hear, God, and help us to see with spirit eyes your word when laid before us. God, thank you for your anointing upon this word, Lord, that you've given me and this revelation that helps us build faith in the mighty name of Jesus. All God's people shout aloud, yes. I believe today that you'll be with me this morning so that you can speak the word of God. And I'm just going to ask Monty if you'd stay with me today because I'm not going to be as long as normal because we have water baptism directly following this service. But today I want to talk to you about faith and how to get faith. And I'm starting a brand new series that will take a few weeks to get through. Because I find that many people who love God and want to find out more about God have a great deal of misunderstanding about faith. So let's go to God one more time and let's ask his blessing on this word. Father, help us to hear your word in Jesus' name and implement it in our hearts. Amen. Thank you, Monty. The reason for this misunderstanding about faith is because people aren't specific with their terms when it comes to faith. Because the Bible is very specific in how it lays out how faith works and how uh, we're supposed to get it. And it distinguishes between a thing called hope and a thing called faith. And what a lot of people operate in is hope. And hope is a good thing, but it can't be mistaken for faith. Hope is a very powerful force. And it's component of faith that kind of helps make faith up. As a matter of fact, you have to have hope before you get any faith. Yet hope is not faith, and, and, and faith alone is what you need to get through the Word of God. And I, I want to help you understand how faith works and what it is. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. I'll first read out of the New Living Translation. It says, and it is impossible to please God without faith. For anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek after him. If faith is required to have a genuine relationship with Jesus Christ, then faith ought to be your single greatest pursuit in life. You ought to have no uh, questions how you get faith or how to maintain faith or how to take care of it or how to strengthen it because no faith no relationship. And that's why I want to talk about this for a while here at, on Sunday mornings. Another reason why people don't have great faith is because they have secondhand faith. It's, it's something that they try to grab hold of someone else's faith. And, and back to our original text, it says, and I'm going to read out of the New King James this time, the same scripture, without faith it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. They have the right words down, a lot of people, but when they get into a serious trial, faith doesn't work for them because they didn't take time to develop their own personal faith, which is why I'm always preaching in this pulpit to be diligent about seeking out the scriptures and memorizing the scriptures and being in the house of God. So how do we get faith? How do I obtain faith? Can I pray for faith? A lot of people think that they can pray for faith, but that's not what the Scripture teaches, and that's not how you get faith. It's a good question. Does faith come at birth? Aren't you born with childlike faith according to the Scripture? And then when I become an adult, when does that childlike faith fall off of me? I'm a positive thinker. Does that mean that I have faith? My grandmother had a lot of faith, but I don't think that I can obtain to that level of faith that she has. Can I feel faith? And that's a good question. Can you feel it when you have it? You can have great faith, but you have to go to the Bible to get your faith. And here's the starting point for obtaining faith, Romans 10, 17. Faith comes, so the whole question of our series, how do I get faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. I make this promise to you today that if you're a believer in this house, if you're visiting today or a regular member, if you sit through this message, you will leave here with your faith strengthened because today I'm going to preach the uncompromised Word of God, the truth of the Word of God, and faith comes by you hearing the Word of God, and we're going to talk about this. 
So the first promise in how to obtain faith is that you have to hear the word of God preached and you have to hear it audibly. Faith is not inherited. Faith is not a feeling. Faith is not simply a positive outlook. You might say, well, do I receive faith simply because I'm a Christian? No. Faith comes exclusively by hearing the word of God. Some people think that you get more faith just how many times you go to church or, or uh, all this and that. But no, exclusively it comes by hearing the word of God. The Bible doesn't tell you that you can pray for faith. It tells us that faith comes by hearing the word of God. So today, for a few moments, we're going to talk about the written word of God and the Bible. A lot of people say, well, I know it's important to read my word. Well, let's talk about the Bible and the word and how important it is. I want to show you a scripture in John chapter 20 and verse 31. But these things are written, John says, that you may believe. These things are what? Written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. So John is driving this point home that faith is made possible by what is written, which is the word of God. I've got my Bible in here today. A lot of people using their cell phones. I think that's a great thing, but get you a Bible too. I think it's a great thing to carry a Bible at times to church. God inspired holy men of old to write scripture. Matter of fact, the word inspired, and I like one of the translations of 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says that the word of God is God breathed because that very meaning of inspired, when God inspired men of old to write the Bible, means that it was God breathed. It says in that scripture that all scripture is inspired by God or God breathed, if you will, and is useful for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped to every good work. And so men of old were anointed to write the word of God. Modern day people like us, there are times when we are motivated by the gifts of the Holy Spirit to prophesy, but the anointing that the men of old operated in is nothing like the anointing that we have today. They had a greater anointing in those moments, and I'm going to tell you why. It's because they were inspired by the direction of the Holy Spirit to write, and the anointing that they were under to write these words, we are judged by what they wrote. If we had the same anointing that came on them at that moment, we would be able to interpret the scripture ourselves. Uh, our, our writings would be equal to theirs and there would have no consequence on us. We'd be able to write our own interpretations and live as we please. But this is the reason why the Bible says, if anybody adds to or takes away from what is written, let him be accursed. If you find somebody that's trying to change the scripture to a strange slant other than what it literally says, you ought to run from it. The written word of God holds great consequence to us. And Jesus endorses this and tells us how important it is to believe what is written in the word. If you back up in these verses, we just read John chapter 20 and verse 31. If you back up to verse 29, this is Thomas, doubting Thomas, that didn't believe that, you know, that Jesus had appeared. Jesus appears to him eight days after the resurrection and says this to him. Thomas, because you've seen me, you have believed because you've seen me. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet they have believed. In verse 30, truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which were not written in this book. But then verse 31, John says, but the things that are written are here so that you can believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. So you see, and I want you to write this down. Your avenue to faith, how do I get faith, Pastor Devin, is in believing what is written. And I want to pause there for a moment and let you just sink that into your spirit. John is saying that the word is so powerful that it actually has the power to convince us of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When the word of God is preached, when scripture is read aloud or it's heard or, or the truth comes, it gives you the capacity to believe and to have faith. That's why it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What it does is it puts the power in your hands as to how much faith you want. 
If you take on a steady diet of the word of God and you're in the house of God every time the doors are open, great will be your faith. If you get hungry for the word of God and you begin to say it out loud so your own ears can hear it. Because a lot of times people think the only way that you can hear the word of God is when it's publicly preached. But you can say the word of God out loud and the hearing of that word becomes faith in your heart. When you read, I think some of the greatest ways to build your faith is to speak the word of God out loud so your own ears can hear it. You know, when I start saying I'm in a battle, no weapon formed against me will prosper. I start saying greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I start saying 2 Timothy 1, 7, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Sickness comes against me. I start saying out loud, Isaiah 53, 4, and 5, by his stripes I am healed. When I'm going against an enemy that brings fear into my life, I start quoting Isaiah 41, 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And when I hear myself start saying that stuff, sometimes you don't need a preacher because I'm not going to be there with you on that Thursday night when you're fighting the giant. You start speaking the word of God yourself, and then all of a sudden great faith comes into you. Somebody say, speak the word of God out loud. If there's anything I want to get across to you today, it's how powerful faith comes when you speak the word of God. You start saying the the fruit of the Spirit in my life is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And when your ears hear that, it'll shut your mouth when you had a bad attitude. Because you're talking about the fruit of the Spirit and giving voice to faith. When you hear things, when you say things out loud, they stick in your heart. Somebody complete this lyric for me. And don't leave me hanging like you're too cool for the rest of us. Everybody, come on. Don't stop. Hold on to that. Oh, man. That's. What about this one? You ain't nothing but a hound dog. Why do you know that? I'll tell you why. It's because B98 was on at work or through your life. You tried to sing it in the shower and you sang it at some point in time. You said it out loud and you did it over and over and it was repeated and it imprinted on your heart and in your being. When you say something out loud, it imprints into your being. I want to show you something. I want to give you some revelation today. Matter of fact, I don't know, Dad, have you ever uh, gotten a message and you started preaching it to yourself and it was revelation to you? I'm telling you, I was preaching this to myself and I was like, I love this revelation. Check this out. In Joshua 1 8, talking about speaking what is written, God said this This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth because he wants you to meditate it on day and night. In other words, speak it and then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. It didn't say, let this word not depart from your mind. You can know this, and demons know the word. But when you, the blood-bought, redeemed child of God, speak the word, that's why God's saying, I don't want it to depart from your mouth, not your heart, not your mind, but don't let my word depart from your mouth because if that ever happens, your faith will exit. Speak the word of God. That's what he wants for his warriors. And this is why there was an all-out assault starting in 2020 on the Bible, the Word of God. Make no mistake about it. Was it political? Was it this? Listen, everything is driven by the spirit world, whether you know it or not. And it was a direct assault on churches. One in five churches closed down. Some of them needed to be closed down. But it was all-out an assault on the Bible truth preaching so that preachers could not be heard and so that the word of God was silenced. How will they believe in him if they haven't heard? And how will they hear unless there be someone who is speaking it? So the scripture is the way that God chose to speak to us. And check this out. When God created the world, go back to Genesis. There was no scripture. But when God released faith, he began to speak And listen, God still in Genesis communicated with the people that he had created, 
But I want to show you the means. And listen to this, the choice of communication with which Adam and Eve, God, God communicated with them in the garden. It's in Genesis 3.8. Check this out. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. It didn't say that they saw God. Hearing is the means of communication that God brings his presence in. When you, when you hear, it speaks volumes to us when you see this because it shows us that God comes through hearing. It didn't say they saw the Lord. The presence of the Lord was in the garden, but it's that God's presence was there through his voice. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking. Now, God speaks. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You might say, well, you know, the written word of God. I understand it's the Bible, but men wrote it. No, not just men. you got to understand this. Look, look at the written word of God in 2 Peter. It says this, above all, you got to realize that no prophecy in the Scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding or from human intuitive. No, those prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit of God, and they spoke from God. That's where the written Scripture came from. And then 2 Timothy 3, and I'm going to look at verse 14. It says, but you must remain faithful to the things you've been taught. You know that they are true, for you know you can trust those who taught you. And then in verse 15, it says, you've been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they've given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. And in the Scripture I quoted a moment ago, all Scripture is inspired by God or God breathed. Useful it is to teach us what is true to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong, and it teaches us to do what is right. Verse 17, God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. The word of God is where we get great faith and joy and peace. When you speak it out loud, peace will come. When you speak it out loud, faith comes in. Look at Isaiah chapter 55 and how God says his word, what it does to our thought process. Because you got to understand, speaking the word of God changes your thinking to begin to think like God. And the word of God does this. He said, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts. Because how many know we try to reason ourselves into sickness? We'll reason ourselves into the bad part of what's supposed to happen in our lives. He said, my thoughts are way higher than your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And he says, you know, the rain and the snow, they come down from the heavens. God likes to speak in, in visuals, and, and they stay on the ground to water the earth. And they cause, the, unless you're in Kansas during a drought, and they cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. That, that rain and that snow produces he says, it's the same with my word. I send it out, and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want to, and it will prosper everywhere I send it. The word of God is where you get great faith and joy and peace. Our words that we say out loud are like buckets. They carry either fear and doubt, or they carry faith. Go back to the story of David and Goliath and look at 1 Samuel and see how words carry things and bring things and emotions into our life. And 1 Samuel, a champion, went out, you know this story, from the camp of Philistines and named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head and he was armed with a coat of mail and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. And he had bronze armor on his legs and bronze javelin between his shoulders now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels and his shield bearer went before him. Then he stood and he cried out, here it is, out loud to the armies of Israel and said to them, why have you come out to line up for battle? Why are you even here? Am I not a Philistine and you're just the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourself and let him come down to me. If he's able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him, and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Now I want you to remember this and mark it down. He's walking back and forth in front of the armies of Israel saying, I defy, give me a man that we may fight together. 
And when Saul and all Israel heard these words, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Words are like buckets. They carry faith or they carry fear and doubt. In this story, Saul had quit listening to Samuel, the man of God, and the word of God. And so there was no barrier or ceiling against fear to the Israelites because Saul had quit speaking the word or letting Samuel come forth and speak the word. The word of God said in 2 Timothy, God hasn't given us the spirit of fear. God's given us a way to change our thinking into faith, and that is by his word. His word changes the way that we think. And did you know that just as God has given you and I, the written word of God, a plan to counteract the enemy when we speak the word of God, did you know that when this happened in Samuel, that God had already given a plan for when the enemy comes against you or when enemies are too numerous or too, are, are much bigger than you? He said, here's what you do. God had already given that plan. They were ignoring this plan and trusting in their own power. And I'd never saw this before, so here's some revelation. Fasten your seatbelts. Are y'all ready in here this morning? Deuteronomy chapter 20 and verse 1. When you go out to battle, God said this way before David faced Goliath. He said, when you go out to battle against your enemies and you see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you, God said, do not be afraid of them. For the Lord your God is with you. When David walked out on that field, he was trusting in what had already been written in the word of God. He said, don't be afraid of them. The Lord your God is with you. Listen, ain't no giant big enough if God's walking with you. He's the one who brought you up from the land of Egypt. And God's talking about himself. He says, so it shall be. When you are on the verge of a battle. Are y'all listening here, Christians? When you are on the verge of a battle, that the priest shall approach and speak to the people, and he shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, today you're on the verge of a battle with your enemies. Do not let your heart faint. This is the written word of God that brings faith into the backbone of your spirit. Do not be afraid. Do not tremble or be terrified because of them. And I like this. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. If Saul would have paid attention to what had already been written, listen, it only took one man, one priest to stand up there, one man of God to walk in front of Israel's lines and the troops that could hear the negative thoughts of the enemy and the words being spoken and begin to speak this like God said, and it would counter the negative thoughts, the doubt, the unbelief, the fears that had grown in the hearts during times of battle. Do you see them? It was an attack of hell, as I said before, on the church when COVID came to silence men of God preaching the truth. I just saw the other day, less than two weeks ago, a prominent minister, and I was just like, Dad, gum it. Can I say that in church? Has 1.9 million followers on Instagram. Announced it. After 900 days, we're finally going back to church services. You know, there's something about having the doors of the house of God open. When you come in here and you hear the word of God preached in faith and your family hears the word of God preached in faith on a Wednesday night or in 180 or in generations or over there, there's something to it. Because listen, when you hear the word of God preached by an anointed priest or a man of God, it builds faith in you. It silences the mouth of the enemy in your life when you hear that and it rallies you to fight. I, you know, I just watch online. Tell that to the Deuteronomy priest and let him walk in front of the armies and hold up a live streaming on his phone of the priest saying it, and you see if it has the same effect as them being there with brave heart paint on their faces and a sword in their hands and the anointed priest going back and forth and saying that. Listen, the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. That is what God's plan is to speak the written word of God. 
You say, well, you know, I, ju I just watch online. Listen, online's not the same. If you watch a concert, it ain't the same as being standing right there in front of the stage. Even, you know, it's not the same in a football game. Right, Garrett? Garrett Reese, manager, K-State, right there. Yeah, he's home for a little bit. It's not the same. He'll tell you. You could watch it on your phone. But listen, even when you film your child on the football field or the basketball court and they make a great play and you show it to somebody, what do you always say? Wish you could have been there. And online is not the same as being in the house of God, hearing and feeling the corporate anointing of the people ready to fight against all the darkness that's coming against the church right now. I got a question for you. How many of you believe that the word of God that is powerful in Deuteronomy 20 is the same today in power as I open up my book and I speak it? How many believe it? How many could shout at me right now that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? He changes not. How many of you believe in this house right now, I wish I could get some help, that if I open up my word and I speak the same thing that Deuteronomy 20, that God never said, well, change it and do it a different way. It's the same effect if I speak. So I get in front of the armies of Israel and I say, everybody in this section, don't be afraid for what you're coming against in your life. Listen, somebody in here is facing cancer. I got to tell you, don't be fearful of it. Don't be dismayed. God is your God. He will hold your right hand. Somebody is hurting in here. Somebody's in sorrow. Somebody's facing a giant. But I come to tell you, put verse 3 back up there just like they did in Deuteronomy. He shall say to them, hear O Israel, today you might be on the verge of a battle with your enemies, but don't let your heart faint. Do not be afraid. Do not tremble or be terrified because of them. Verse 4, for the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies and to save you. Whatever you come in this room with, you got to know that God will back you up if you just learn to speak the word of God. Oh. Oh. I guess there ain't nothing left but to draw the sword and move forward. We done heard what God said he would do. Now, when you leave this room, you go fight hell with the spoken word of God. How do I get faith? Just showed you the last 30 seconds. You get up and you hear the word of God spoke. When you come to church on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night, you speak the word of God yourself. This is the way that God prescribed for the child of God to gain faith. All the way back to Deuteronomy. You speak the word of God. That man of God speaks the word. And then you speak the word of God yourself. God gives people victories on the basis of faith. And how does it come? By the speaking of the word of God. God told Israel directly, this is how you overcome your enemy. When the enemy is gripping you with fear, you have one priest stand up and say these words. And that's how much confidence God has in his book. That's why if all you ever do is listen to media words out there, Hmm? and things of fear and doubt, you'll never have great faith. Sometimes listening to things that aren't necessarily evil, but they're not faith building, which is why people come up to me all the time. They say, well, did you hear? Most of the time I'm like, no. There's one thing I pay attention to, that no matter what happens in the earth or in my nation today, what I say and I repeat God's word says, that's what's going to happen in America. I'm tired of talking about how bad it is in America. I want to start talking about how good God is and what he said he would do in the last days. If my people will, I will. Are you in here this morning? I already need a shower. I'm preaching. You preach with me. Could I, could I get a yes? <laughs> oh. It's not that listening to things that are negative are a sin. It's not faith building, and you won't have a strong faith. You've got to feed yourself a steady diet of the Word of God and speak the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing. Can I show you some more revelation? God, who at various times, this is in Hebrew, the first three verses, and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, 
has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. Now, see, most people read that, and it just goes right over their head. They don't, they don't see it. They don't understand what's happening. Here's what it's saying. It's saying this, God has chosen to put all of his power in his word. We mistakenly think that it's, you know, a powerful church. No, it's a powerful church because they speak the truth in the church. God has chosen to put all of his power in his word. Listen, it doesn't talk about the power of his word. It says the word of his power. This means he's vested all of his power in his word. The Holy Spirit acts when the word is spoken. And that's exactly what you see in the creation week in Genesis chapter 1. Nothing happened until God spoke. And when God spoke, worlds were created, you see. The Holy Spirit stepped in and moved when the word was spoken. So what you need to understand is that the Spirit has agreed to always honor the word of God. That's what, that's what happened when the worlds were created. If you want the Holy Spirit to move in your life and to bless you and to bring fruit in your life and peace and success and all that stuff, you honor the Word, you speak the Word of God by faith. That's where the power is because that Hebrews 1.3, what did it say? He upholds all things by the Word of His power. When you see the value that God places on His own Word, I mean, there's even place in it's Psalm chapter 138, it says, I'll worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified, look at this, your word above your own name. Because if you can't keep your word, if your word is not good, your name is no good. So he said, I magnified my word even above my own name. So again, one of the greatest ways to build faith is by speaking the word of God out loud to yourself. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You can cause your physical ears to hear the word of God. And David drives this home in one of my favorite psalms, Psalms 103. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Pause. What is he doing? He is causing himself to hear. He is strengthening his inner man. And then verse 2, and I think this is great, led by the Spirit. Jared picked this scripture this morning. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Well, you know, you're just serving God for his benefits. Duh. That's what we're told to do. Not just the benefits, but the relationship of a God who says, I will hold your hand through trouble and through this life. And so David goes on, and he's saying these things out loud. Forgives all your iniquities. He heals your diseases. A moment ago when Jared started speaking this right before that song, I was like, thank you, Holy Spirit, because that's the Scripture. That's right where I'm going. And when he was speaking it out loud, all of us started lifting our hands. Faith began to build. The praise began to build because we were strengthening audibly our inner man. He redeems your life from destruction, David says. He's preaching to himself, crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like, well, just pause right there, satisfies your mouth. If you want to start speaking good things about your health and about your body so that your youth is renewed like the eagles, there's something about what comes out of your mouth. David says it. He keeps going. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. Now, it doesn't mean that all these things are going to come to pass right when you start believing them, but they will eventually begin to take place in your life when you believe them because that's what faith does. So you might want to write this down. Faith doesn't change God. Faith changes circumstances. Faith is the vehicle in which God uses to bring change on planet Earth. You might say, well, what about the Holy Spirit? Doesn't the Holy Spirit do miracles? Yeah, of course he does. But he always does them in conjunction with the Word of God, when the Word of God is spoken. 
As a matter of fact, there's a place in, in Mark, chapter 16 and verse 20. Look at it. It says, are you all tired? Are you all right? All right? It says, and they went out, the disciples, and preached everywhere. There's the spoken word of God. The Lord working with them. And check this out. When the word of God was spoken, the Holy Spirit did what? Confirmed the word through accompanying signs. And so I say when we speak about healings in this room, that there will be healings and signs and wonders in the body of Christ in these, like right now days. Could somebody have faith enough to shout yes in this house this morning? The Holy Spirit, when the word was preached, accompanied and confirmed the word, the speaking of the word, with signs and with wonders. I think that's powerful, and it speaks volumes to us. Listen, I'm going to close off here because we got water baptism in a moment. You should speak out loud your testimony often. Revelation 12, 11 tells us that they overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives to the death. I've often shared about how three years ago melanoma was found on my body. I didn't wait till then to go find me a scripture to believe in. Scripture and speaking the Word of God was a way of life for me. The first thing I began to do is speak God's Word out loud. That's the first thing that came out of my mouth. The doctor called me on my cell phone the day before Camp 180, and I was messing with one of my old trucks. The first thing that came out of my mouth was, God, I don't understand anything. But then I quoted a Scripture, no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. That's what I know. I don't even understand what the doctor was saying, but I begin I to speak out loud. Listen, you, you need to memorize Scripture. Men of covenant, I pray to God that you're taking it seriously. When we give you one Scripture a month on our, on our Men of Covenant Facebook, of over 50 men, our last event we had like 57 men, to memorize Scripture. Because when you get toe-to-toe -to -toe with that giant in your life, the Holy Spirit has got to have something to work with, to recall from your memory. When I was standing in that storage unit working on that truck, I didn't have to go grab my phone. I didn't have to ask Google, please give me scriptures on healing. I already knew Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. I already knew what the Bible said about what my condition, what the outcome would be. So speaking the word of God is why I keep drilling this home in our church people because you need to understand the power of speaking it out loud. Because listen, faith comes by hearing. Because the first thing that comes at you when the doctor says stuff to you like that is like bullets from a machine gun, fear and worry and doubt and what could happens come, but you got to clear the air with the truth of the matter. For the believer, it's the word of God. Are you hearing me in here this morning? As a matter of fact, I remember being in several doctor's rooms and, and doctor's offices, and in that room, I would speak Scripture to the doctor so that faith was the dominating force in the room. Doctors, they have to deliver doubt because it's part of their job. Matter of fact, when they put the little bond on my head and was wheeling me off for for uh, two surgeries in one day, they said, well, you know, we just got to tell you. We have to let you know that, you know, this, uh, it could, it could, I've seen it go, but how many of you have ever heard doctors say, well, it could go both ways. I've seen it go this and I've seen it do that. And they have, they have to deliver doubt. They have to tell you, you could die. Listen, let faith, throw this, that up there, always be the dominating voice no matter where you are. By speaking the word of God. Somebody needs to hear this today. Don't be afraid to speak up in that doctor's office. Are you hearing me today, church? Uh, the word of God is what I'm talking about. Don't be afraid to speak the word of God in that lawyer's office. Don't be afraid to speak the word of God about your children. You ought to get you a scripture that when you find yourself in the principal's office with your child or they're saying this or that, you speak a scripture before you leave that office. It's quiet in here because ain't nobody thought about that before. But I'm telling you, as the man of God, the priest, stand before wherever you are that could be a giant in your life and let faith always be the dominant voice no matter where you are. Don't be afraid to speak up. See, the world has no problem dropping 42 F-bombs in the movies of today, and most children of God are fine listening to it. 
co-workers dropping dozens of F-bombs every single day. Yet the child of God becomes too timid to speak God's word, which by faith is the truth of the matter to a believer in any place or any location. The doctor says it could go this way because I've seen it do both. I spoke up and I said, Doc, I'm a man of faith. Isaiah 54, 17 tells me that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. This goes no further. You're going to get it all. Everything's going to be all right because God said, and he also said in his word in, in Isaiah 41, 10, that I'm not to be afraid. I'm not to be dismayed for he is my God. He will help me. And verse 13 tells me in chapter 41 that he will hold my right hand while I go through this. And as a matter of fact, my favorite scripture to quote during that time was Mark 11, 23, and 24. And every single person in this room, if you're a believer, ought to memorize this scripture. Because when you come up against an impossible situation, you have got to quote this scripture. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things that he says, that this is how it's going to be. <laughs> then you shall have them. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, if you believe that you receive them, you will have them. And so speaking the word of God in those moments, and when I would speak that word, most of the doctors would, would, would do this. And at that moment in my body, I felt a chill go down my spine like the Holy Spirit was pouring steel into my backbone that no matter what I had to face, I knew that God was going to bring me out on the other side because I spoke the word of God before I left that office, and that's where I left it. No room for doubt in here. Neither give place to the devil, James says. That word place is topos, a position of opportunity. And, and doctors and lawyers and different ones, God bless them, they're paid to, but they will, they will create a position of opportunity in your mind or your heart. You got to create the right one. You got to speak faith no matter where you are. Can somebody say a loud amen in here today? What did I feel in those moments when the Holy Spirit was pouring strength into me? What was it? Faith came by hearing myself speak the word of God. Stop being timid. Speak the word of God to anybody. If you're tired of them with that language, say a scripture. and See how long it is before they drop it again. Speak the word of God. Well... They're going to know that I'm a real Christian. I feel faith in the house today. Not because I'm in church, not because we sang our favorite songs, not because we're Pentecostal, because the word of his power is in the house. Not the power of his word. He said the word of my power. And so... What situation do you need to speak out loud to in order to build your faith? You can play a little something. What situation do you need to speak to to build your faith? And I'm talking about out loud. Step one, how do I get faith? And we'll go another week or two on this. I'm going to talk about faith versus hope. How do I get faith? Faith comes by hearing what has been written. We don't speak to believe. I might want to write this one down. We believe, therefore we speak. What that means is how many of you believe the word of God already? Shout amen. Well, you don't speak it so that you can believe it. You already believe it, therefore you speak it. That's where faith comes in. So what situation do you need to speak to today? And in just a moment, I'm going to call every single person that's going through a battle or you're facing an enemy, a giant, an emotion, something in your family, whatever it is, if you're facing it, we're simply going to speak faith. We're going to speak the Word of God this morning. In just a moment, I want everyone that's in a battle or facing a, a situation to come up in this altar, and I'm going to pray first. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that today the right spirit is released. God, that the faith 
of believers in this house, Lord, full of faith we are today because of your word. And I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus, we have come to church. We didn't come to church just to hear good singing. We didn't come to church just because there was a good program for our children. We came today, Lord, as children of God. Lord, that if we're not in a battle, we're headed for a battle or we're coming from a battle. And so today, Lord, I speak the word of God and by faith, we stand together and we do what your word says so that whatever we're facing we speak that that faith begins to build in us. And I pray, Lord, that every individual in here that has any type of situation would not be held back, but, God, that they would stand before you today and speak the word of God to their situation in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to ask you in just a moment to stand, but as you stand, everyone stand in just a moment. If you're facing something, when you stand, I want you to stand and just begin to walk down to these altars, and we're going to speak faith. Nothing crazy is going to happen. We're going to pray, speak the word of God, and that's what you need. So stand to your feet right now. Everyone that has in a battle, a struggle, an emotion, hurt, there's a giant in your life, I want you to come and I want you to stand. It could be anything, anything at all where you need faith. Faith for my career. I'm a little confused and why God has led me to this path, and I'm not quite sure. I don't know where to go. You want to speak faith. Anything that you're facing right now, just come and stand. Come and stand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want them to put Deuteronomy chapter 20 and verse 1 through 4 back up there, and I'm going to read this. Every single person in this room, if you're standing and you're facing something, I want you to hear the word of God. God said when you go to battle against your enemies and you see chariots and horses and people more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them, for the Lord your God is with you, who brought you up out of Egypt. So it shall be when you are on the verge of this battle that the priest shall approach and speak to the people. And I say it today, O Israel, today you may be on the verge of a battle with your enemies, but don't let your heart be faint. Do not be afraid. Do not tremble or be terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. And I speak today, Father, in Jesus' name over every individual. Just lift your hands to heaven right now that has approached your altar. In this room today, God, facing anything, God, that we've spoken of just a moment ago, any giant, Lord, any confusion, any hurt, any sorrow, God, I pray right now in Jesus' name must go because you are the God who's present with us. Now, with your hands lifted, I want you to look on the screen at Mark chapter 11, verse 23, and I want you to say this out loud with me. Come on, say it out loud. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast in the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Verse 24, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Come on and give God praise in the house right now. Come on, you speak that faith. Now I want you to say this out loud, Isaiah 41, 10. Come on, say it out loud, as loud as you can. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Speak verse 13. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, fear not. I will help you. Now come on and give God praise for the help of heaven. Come on, throw your hands back in the air one more time and give him praise for the help of heaven. Lord, thank you that you said you would help us. God, for guidance in this career. God, for healing in this body. God, for confusion and hurt and sorrow, whatever it is, we go ahead and give you praise, and we thank you that you are the God that will help us. And we thank you for it in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, come on, give him praise for the word of his power. The word of his power. I tell you today, you might say, well, you know, it was just a quick moment. I'm not sure. Look, you got to have faith. What you said, God will bring it to pass. That's what it's all about in here, speaking the word of God. And I want you to commit. Men of covenant are learning that scripture in Isaiah 41, 10 and verse 13. Make sure you memorize that scripture. But I think every Christian in this room ought to commit to memorizing Mark 11, 23 and 24. 
So that when you come up against the giant, you say, Jesus told me that if I speak to this mountain, and I won't doubt in my heart, but I'll believe the things that I say will come to pass. I will have whatever I say. Memorize the Word of God. Memorize that Scripture. It's powerful. Yes? How do I get faith? Faith comes by hearing what's already been written. You can be seated this morning. I thank God for those that are in here today and for those who respond. I thank you, online audience, for joining us today. Thank you for watching our service today. The Ark is truly a voice for truth in these times. We pray you felt the presence of God as you joined us. If you're within driving distance, we would love for you to join us in person. Our congregation is now taking a moment to further the truth of the gospel through giving. If you were touched today, will you take a moment and sow into this live stream? We're sending out the word of God twice a week, and you can join us by pressing the donate button on this post. 100% of the proceeds will go to furthering the message of the gospel online, and people are watching all over the world. Take a moment to like or follow our page, or even subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss a single service. God bless you for joining us today. See you next time.